This is a video for the recent or new owners of the Fox Bat from Bolton E-Bikes. I want to show you how to get your brand new bike out of the box and get all of the basic things set up so it is ready to ride. Now, all of the tools that you need are inside the box already. If you bought one of these recently, then it comes with a Bolton e-bikes multi-tool along with a couple of other small tools. The only thing you really need that isn't included in here would be either some scissors or a knife to cut off these straps and cut the zip ties off on the bike. So let's go ahead and pop this box open and start getting this set up. When you first open the box towards the very top, you're going to find a smaller box that's going to contain the tools. There's the multi-tool, like I mentioned, and a wrench in there, uh, your pedals, some of those other small accessories are going to be in here. So you're probably going to want to go ahead and open that first because these are some things you're going to need as you're getting the bike together. We have a three-way wrench that's very handy for adjusting everything on the bike. We have this wrench, which is for putting the pedals on. And then we also have a couple of nuts and bolts in this bag. That's for the front fender. Also in the box, we have the pedals. So we'll get to those in a bit. And then we also have a tail light. That's a small battery powered tail light. And then a front headlight that is integrated into the main bike battery. We also have a couple of e-bike class stickers. When the bike comes out of the box, it's programmed as a class two bike, and that's what these are set up for. So first things first, let's get the bike actually out of the giant cardboard box. I'm going to go ahead and lift the bike out, and it is fairly heavy. It's around 70 pounds to pick up and out of this box. So if you have trouble with the weight, an easy tip is to take a knife or something sharp and cut the corners of the box. Just cut this all the way down on both ends, push the flaps of the cardboard down, and then you can kind of get the bike out of the box without having to lift it out. So just bear in mind that you don't have to lift it out. Cutting the box is an easy way to do it as well. I have both of the corners of the box cut now. It'll be easy to get it out. First thing to do from here would be to cut off all of the zip ties and get all of these foam pieces off of the bike. Now make sure you have the bike on a nice level surface. I have a handy little bike stand there that's keeping the bike upright for me. But if you're in a garage or on concrete or something, so that way the bike can't tip over because at this point it will be a little bit tipsy. But the first thing we're gonna do to help stabilize it and give you something to hang on to is put the handlebars on. We're going to take the three-way wrench out of the bag here. You can also use the Bolton e-bikes multi-tool that comes with the bike, of course, so you have a couple of options. First thing to notice is that the stem here is turned backwards inside the box. That's just so everything fits nicely. Uh, it is loose enough, though, that you should be able to just grab that and spin it around towards the front. Now, these two pinch bolts on the side are what tighten up that stem and keep it straight with your front wheel. We're not gonna worry about tightening those up yet because we're gonna wait till we get the handlebar and the front wheel on before we do that. Let's go ahead and grab the handlebars and put these up here. And you're gonna have the screen on the left-hand side. Your shifter is on the right. Just make sure that when you pick this up and kind of twist it around, that your cables look nice and neat. They're not twisted around or tangled or anything. Okay, we're gonna loosen these four bolts, pull them all the way out, and then we can put our handlebars in place. So with this piece off, we can put our handlebars right here, put this back on, and just make sure when you're putting these four bolts back on to tighten them evenly, so you don't have one that's super tight and one that is all the way off. And just be aware as well that when you do that, there's going to be a slight gap between this piece and this piece on your stem. That's perfectly normal. That's the way these are designed. At this point, you're going to want to get the bars straight left to right. Make sure they're centered as best as you can. I honestly usually just eyeball it. If you want to get it exact, you can always take a tape measure, but to help you, if you look through this hole on the front of the stem, you can see some small little hash marks or tick marks. And 
you can use those to see where the center is left to right so those marks should be even and then you can also use those to adjust the bars twisting backwards or forwards and that's just for your own comfort wherever you feel like everything is fitting right but i usually like to have my handlebars sitting once the bike is up and level on the front wheel so that my brakes are tilted down just slightly that's where i find things to be comfortable so we're going to put it right there and tighten these all the way down now that we have the handlebars on, we can grab those, lift the front end of the bike up and put on the front wheel. So one thing we need to do on the front wheel first, and that is to put the quick release in. So let's explain how a quick release works, what it does. I know I've had a few questions about this during bike assemblies. So the quick release is gonna be zip tied to your front wheel here. These two plastic pieces stuck into the wheel right now are just for shipping. So you don't need these. You can pop these out and toss them in the trash. Sometimes they are stuck on there pretty good because the box is being hit from the side during shipping on occasion. They can be stuck in. If you do have one like that, just a quick little trick is to use your quick release skewer and push it through from one side and you can usually use that to pop that out if needed. To put the quick release onto your front wheel, there's two springs that are on the axle here. We've got a nut that goes onto this end. So pull this nut off, pull one of the springs off. We're gonna slide it through the hub. The lever is gonna go on the non-disc side. And then we put this little spring back on. The smaller end of the spring goes towards the wheel and then you take the nut and just loosely put that back on. We'll tighten that up once we actually put the wheel onto the bike. So at this point, we're ready to lift up the front end of the bike and put the wheel on. Make sure that your disc brake is on the left side of the wheel. Pick the bike up and then slide the wheel onto your axle. And the main thing you'll have to pay attention to is your disc brake, making sure that the caliper slides over the disc on the left hand side. Once that's in place, you can go ahead and tighten this down. So we've got that small nut on one side. I'm going to tighten that finger tight. And once that's snug, then we can take our quick release and tighten it all the way down. And as you're tightening it, you can kind of move it back and forth a few times and start to feel it get tighter and tighter. And eventually it'll be nice and snug where you'll have to use the the kind of the palm of your hand to get it pushed over. And now our wheel is on. Now one quick note, just for safety reasons, I recommend putting your quick release lever up or as close to up as you can. If you have it pointed down, you can't actually tell at a quick glance if it's tight or if it's just hanging loosely down and your wheel's about to fall off. If it's pointed forward, then there's a little bit more likelihood you could get a sti stick or a branch or something on a trail caught in it and it would actually pop it open. Mm -hmm. But in this position, it can't get caught and you can tell that it's tightened down. The easiest way to straighten the front wheel and the handlebars is to stand in front of the bike, put the wheel between your legs about like this to hold it, and then turn your handlebars until they look straight. And once everything looks good, now you can take your three-way wrench or the multi-tool and tighten down these two side pinch bolts on the stem. So there's one on this side. We'll get that nice and snug. Now our handlebars should feel nice and tight. The wheel shouldn't wiggle around. Everything should be solid. Let's continue on with everything by the front of the bike. We have a front fender and a headlight. So we're going to slip this in. from the back and there's a tab right at the top where this is gonna bolt on. That is gonna go towards the front. And then we also have our headlight and that's going to go right here as well. So there's a single bolt that's gonna go through both of these. And that is in the small bag with the wrench and the tools. Grab the longest bolt out of there. You're gonna have a single washer on this side of it slide that through your headlight, then through your fender, and then finally through the hole on the fork. 
And then on the back side, you're gonna put the final washer and lock nut. Now, when you're putting this on, I recommend just lifting that up a little bit. That'll give your tire some more clearance underneath that front fender. And then you can either grab a small wrench and use your three-way tool up front to tighten this up, or, or you can use the handy Bolton e-bikes multi-tool that comes with the bike as well. Once our bolt is tightened down on the top of the fender, we have two fender stays. There's one on each side, and this goes to the last small little bolts you'll find in the little baggie. We're gonna take this and slip it through the hole right here, and then it threads into this mounting point right on the bottom of that front fork. Now it just needs to be snug. You don't need to over tighten it because this is a plastic piece. Now you may notice that your fender clearance on the tire could be off a little bit. And to adjust that, you use these little nuts right here. If you loosen this nut just a hair, then you can actually slide this metal piece forward and backwards. And that will change your clearance between the fender and your tire at the back here. So once you have it positioned at the right spot, then you can go ahead and tighten that back down. And you can do that on both sides and just kind of adjust those a little bit until your fender is sitting nice and straight and clears your tire on both sides. Now we just need to plug in the headlight that we mounted on here with our fender. So there's a cable right with all these front cables on the front of the bike. And if you look closely at them, you'll see one of them usually has a white mark on it. And the way that these come from the factory right now, that mark is going for the positive side and the one without it is gonna be the negative side. And if you look very closely underneath the light on the right hand side, there actually are marks that show positive, which is towards the inside, negative is towards the outside. And there's a little blade connector, so we just plug that right in right there. There we go. Now our headlight is plugged in, we can turn it up to where it's pointing forward, and you can use a Phillips head screwdriver on this side if you need to tighten that up a little bit. Next, let's put on our pedals. Make sure that you check the pedals have a right and a left. Right hand threads on the right pedal, left hand threads on the left pedal. And if you look very closely at the end, there's actually a small engraving that says either R or L that tells you which one is which. So we can double check. Here's the one that has the R on it. So that's gonna be normal right hand threads. So we can put that on by hand. And once you have that tightened down as far as you can by hand, then you can take the wrench that's included. This is gonna be the 15 millimeter end and tighten it all the way down. And then go ahead and do the same thing for the left side. Just remembering that the left side has left hand threads. So you actually turn it counterclockwise to tighten. Last thing we have to put on the bike is the rear tail light. And this is just a battery powered tail light. So there's a small battery inside. It's not connected to the bike in any way. There's a small tab that you pull out. So that way the battery can make contact and turn on. Some people have uh, been confused about where to turn the light on because it's not super clear where the button is. If you look very closely, there's a button right on the top. So if you pull this tab out, <laughs> There we go. I've just pulled out the little plastic tab, and here you can see if we push the button on the top, we can change from a blinking mode to off to solid on. And that's where the button is. And you can mount this right underneath your seat on the seat post or anywhere else you'd like to put it. We've got everything we need on the bike to ride it, but we do wanna make sure that the battery is charged up and ready to go. There is a button on the top that you can press it lights up a few LED lights. They're all green and basically they start to disappear as the battery gets lower. It's not as accurate as the display is, but at least it gives you a good indicator. Did I remember to charge it or not? And you can tell by the number of lights. I can see there's one missing. So I know this battery could definitely use a bit of a charge. Now, if we wanna charge the battery on the bike, there is a charge port down low right here. You just pop that rubber cap off you plug the charger in there and then into the wall. And if you'd prefer to pop the battery off and take it inside, you just take the keys, which are typically zip tied up to the handlebars. You insert the key in right here and it's spring loaded to one side. You just hold it to the right here and pull the battery towards you and it swings right off. 
and you don't need the keys to put the battery back on, only to remove it. So if we want to put the battery back on, say after it was fully charged, just give it a firm push this direction. Here's the charger that comes with the bike. There's a cord that you plug into a standard 110 volt outlet. You just plug this into the charger here, and then you plug this into the bike. There's a small LED light right here that will turn on when you plug this into the wall. And while the bike is charging, that's gonna turn red. And when the bike is done, that's gonna turn green. Now the charger does shut off automatically when you are done charging the bike. So you don't have to worry about leaving it on there longer, paying super close attention to it. I don't recommend leaving it on all the time 24 seven, because that's just going to unnecessarily kind of slowly discharge and charge your battery back up. A little bit longer is okay because that will actually help the cells in the battery to balance. So all you need to do is plug it in, like I said, either on or off the bike into that charge port and unplug it when it's done. The bike should be ready to ride, but I think it's a good idea to double check a few things at this point. The derailleur is one of those. So we have our shifter up on the handlebars. So if you are in gear number one up on the shifter on the handlebars, you should be in this largest or what you would consider the lowest gear. Now, because the kickstand's kind of in the way to pedal the pedals around while it's leaned on the kickstand, what you can do is turn the bike on and just give it a little bit of throttle and run it through the gears that way. Now you can see I should be in number one, but I'm actually in the second gear. So this needs to be tightened a little bit. Here is the cable that's gonna tighten that. This is a small adjustment for increasing the tension or loosening it. So to tighten it, we're just gonna turn it counterclockwise a couple of turns, and then we can just give a little bit of throttle again and there it's starting to pop into the first gear, not quite all the way. We'll tighten it a little bit more. And now it looks like we're staying in the right gear. So at this point we can go ahead and shift through the rest of the gears and make sure it goes all the way through the range nice and smooth. And if we just need a fine tuning adjustment, just move that clockwise to loosen it or to let it come down or counterclockwise to tighten it and have it come up. Now since we're here around the rear wheel, one of the other things I want to mention is what this guy is for right here. That is a magnet and it's a speed sensor. This is what detects your speed as the wheel is rotating around. So if you fire up the bike for the first time and you're not getting a speed reading or if you get some sort of error after you go for a short ride, just be aware that you may have to scoot this over or scoot the sensor over, make sure those are lined up and that it's working properly. You can see on the towards the back here, if the bike is on, there'll be a little red light that comes on and off each time it passes. Now it's time to turn the bike on, actually take it for a ride. There are two buttons underneath the screen. They're a little hard to see, but you can feel them. There's one on the left side right here and one on the right. The one on the right hand side is the power button. So you push the power button, hold it down for about two seconds. That will turn the screen on. And then here's the basic operations. Uh, first, you have the minus and plus buttons right here. Those are to adjust your pedal assist. If it's on zero in this corner, that means you have no pedal assist and also no power with the throttle right here. So the bike is just a heavy bicycle at this point. If you turn that up to one, then as you start pedaling, the bike's gonna kick in some power. If you turn it to two, it's gonna give you more power. And then the default programming is set to five levels of assist. So that is maximum power. Now the way this bike is set up, this throttle is also tied to the level of assist. So if you have it on one and you hit the throttle, you can ride the bike without pedaling at all, but it's just gonna give you a little bit of power. If you want the most power you can get on throttle only, you do have to turn it all the way up to five. Now the left button I mentioned is what's called the mode button. If we press that once, we can change from our trip meter to a riding time. Press it again, that's going to show the odometer. And then again, it's gonna show our average speed, max speed, and then back to our trip meter. Also from the main screen, if you want to turn on the headlight that's on the front of the bike, you hold down the plus button. You'll see a small light symbol here, and then the headlight will also turn on. 
and to turn it back off, you just hold it for a few seconds to go back off. The bottom left corner is a brake symbol. So that's just telling you that one of your brakes is pulled. So if your motor cuts out on you at some point and you feel like something weird was happening, always check and just see if maybe you accidentally pulled one of your brakes a little bit because that will absolutely turn the motor off. That's what it's supposed to do. Now you may notice it's in kilometers right now. We want to change it to miles per hour. So we can hold down the mode button and here's how we get into our settings. So we have system metric right now. Just press the mode button again to select it and then use either the minus or the plus buttons to change it to Imperial. Now we can use the minus and plus buttons to go to the other settings. There's a maximum screen brightness. Auto off means that it's gonna turn the display off after five minutes if there's no activity. Battery is a 48 volt battery, so we leave that there. Battery indicator currently is set to voltage. It can be either set to show the actual voltage, which is what I prefer, or a percentage. And if we go to more, now it's gonna ask for a password. This is for the more advanced settings. And the default password is always 1919. And the numbers rotate around, so you can use the minus button to go from zero to nine. Wheel size, we actually wanna change this. Even though it's 26 inches on this fat tire wheel, the outer diameter is what's gonna give us the correct speed reading. So we're gonna change that to 20 eight inches. Speed limit currently is set to 32 kilometers an hour. That's what makes this a class two bike because it's effectively limited to 20 miles an hour. If you're using this off road, you can turn that up just by using the plus button and crank it all the way up to whatever you'd like at that point. So we're gonna leave that at 32. Like I said, that makes it our legal class two bike. And then there's some more advanced settings that are grayed out. You don't need to change those because you can't. Uh, the assist levels, that's how many assist levels are on that main screen. So default is five. If you'd like smaller increments of power, you can actually change that to nine. If you'd like bigger jumps in between power, which normally nobody's going for that, but nine, some people like, you can also change it down to three. But I'm gonna leave that at five. We just go to next and then the pin on that is basically setting a password when you first turn the bike on i would recommend if you're going to mess with that make sure you write down whatever that password is because if you lose it the only way to reset it is to go through all 9999 passwords so make sure you don't lose that so the pin number the defaults 1919 but you can change it here if you'd like to. Now, if you'd like to turn that password on feature, like I mentioned, basically what that's gonna do is when you turn the bike on for the first time, it's gonna ask for a password. And if you don't know the password or can't enter it in in a set amount of time, I think it gives you 20 seconds or something, then the bike won't turn on. So somebody can't turn on the motor and ride it away. But you do have to enter that password every single time you get on the bike. So I find that it's a little bit more annoying than anything. Let's get back to where those advanced settings were. And I should have mentioned that if you do wait a little bit while looking at the settings, it will just eventually return to the main screen, but it does save your settings. So start password, uh, and then uh, basically, these are mostly your password settings here, and we can just hit the exit. That's also gonna get you back to the main screen. At this point, I would say you're ready to take your bike go for a ride, uh, adjust your seat, adjust your handlebars a little bit to where it's comfortable, but make sure to just go have fun and don't crash. Thanks again for watching another video. Once again, this is for those people that just recently purchased or if you're considering it and wanna know what's required to get it out of the box. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit like. I do appreciate all of your views, your comments, all of your participation on the YouTube channel. So thanks again. If you've bought one of these, I do appreciate it. And I'll see you again in another video.